to sacrifice his own son as a living sacrifice of what, what did God provide? He provided a ram Amen. in place. Mm -hmm. So Isaac is a living sacrifice. And who else? Our very own Savior, Jesus Christ, came down, born among us, sinless, and he lived among us as an illustration, a perfect illustration of a living sacrifice and obedience to his Father's will. However, we know that he rose again. Praise God. He rose again on the third day. And what did he, he do? He said, I will come again. And he, and he also said this. He had rooms that he was preparing for each and every one of us. There are many rooms in my Father's house. And one is prepared for you. The verb present, when Paul is saying present this, this means a presence once and for all. And in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20, also our brother Paul, he says, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. Have you ever thought about that? The body that you've been given? It's not your own. All right. You look in the mirror and you're looking good, right? <laughs> right? You, you are not your own. But you are a child of God. Amen. And then while we're here, I definitely believe it's important that we take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, I'm not in my twenties anymore. I'm not the incredible Hulk that I used to think I could lift weights and you know, be like Wayne. You know? uh, I'm trying, I'm trying. But uh, I definitely believe that God wants us to take care of this temple. And that we represent Him. When you walk around, you are an illustration of Christ. And you are the hands and feet of Christ. And you know what? Someone is always watching. That's right. Whether you know it or not. So when you walk around defeated, and, you know, you've got this look of shame, and just, you know, just maybe just having a bad day. Someone's watching. Doesn't mean you're not going to have a bad day. You're going to have the good days and bad days. But believe it or not, you know, people are always watching you. People are always listening. And that smile that you have on your face, maybe the way you greet somebody, you know, you're being, uh, uh, kind and open the door for somebody and you say thank you. You know, all those things that you think are just common courtesy mm -hmm. you don't see very often anymore. Um, those are all, I feel like, are ways that we can show the love of Christ. Nice. And uh, so amen to that. <laughs> uh, so point number one is give God the body. Mm. Give God your body. You continue to be a living sacrifice. And how, it's not easy, right? <clears throat> to be able to walk and live as if our bodies are a living sacrifice. Because God blessed us with two eyes. He gave us ears. He gave us a mouth. And I've heard this often that God gave you two ears so you can listen twice as much Amen. as you speak. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. However, with the same body, the same gifts that God has given you. We can use it for His glory just as we did earlier. We're praising Him with our lips and honor and singing and raising our hands to the Lord, but it's the same hands that we can also bring God. Mm -hmm. God, why did you give us my gifts? Why? With the lips that we can honor Him, we can also you know, use His name in vain. We can curse Him. And we curse others. The gifts that God has given us, we can use for glory, or we can use them for ourselves, and we can use it to hurt others. It's, it's, I think about the people that I've hurt. And I think about um, the evil things that I've done. And I'm reminded when Satan wants to really just get under my skin to remind me of the people that I've hurt, that the, the mean things that I've said. And uh, I know that you know that's in the past. Mm -hmm. That God has forgiven me. Amen. And, you know we have to forgive ourselves. Praise God. Yes. But God gives us new blessings and new mercies daily. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. The breath that you had in your lungs when you woke up this morning, 
That was a miracle. Amen. Each and every day is an opportunity to praise God, to, to serve someone else, and to be able to honor Christ. Um, whether we believe it or not, the world wants to manipulate our thoughts, mm -hmm. manipulate and warp our minds. It doesn't take very long for you to look on social media, mm -hmm. right? Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. all of those social media, right? It's full of just, just disgusting things, right? Just, just call it as it is. Sex, all the things that just are very appealing to our flesh, right? It's appealing to our eyes. However, that scum and those things that would pull us away from what God wants us to do, we have to put parameters, right? We have to put safeguards in our lives. And I know of many, many men in um, different accountability groups who've had to just share, hey, I need to put a internet blocker on my thing so I'm not even tempted to look at something over here. Right. And you know, praise God that we are trying to stand up um, for our convictions and honor God with our eyes and Amen. honor God with our lips. Because whether we believe it or not, our sins, those things that we feel like are very secretive, well, this is just, this is my sin. Mm -hmm. It ain't hurting anybody. It's just between me and God and, you know, however it hurts the body. Mm -hmm. It hurts families. Mm -hmm. um, pornography, lust, greed, mm -hmm. all those things just, it's like a snowball effect. Mm -hmm. It hurts the people closest to you. It can hurt your career. And hurt your co-workers. It's just a just it's like a festering thing that won't go away until it's cut off. And that's what I believe Paul was calling us. Let your lives be a living sacrifice. And that means going to, just as Jesus said, you know, if, if your sin, if your hand causes you to sin, your eyes cause you to sin, cut it off, right? No, no, literally, right? But you know, you gotta be willing to take that extra step to put in those sick bodies. And what Paul gave them a command. Right? Do not be conformed. That's an imperative. Uh, I know there's a, a few military in here and a few retired. And all of us who were in the military had to go to boot camp, right? Whether you went to basic training in the Air Force, the Army, Marine Corps, or Navy, those drill sergeants, they were waiting for you, right? Mm -hmm. Whether you, you know, you first got off the bus or when you got on the bus, they were yelling at you and screaming at you and the game on, right? Mm -hmm. When they told you something, you didn't just like, all right, Jim Sergeant, I'll get to it. Right? You moved expeditiously. Mm -hmm. You did it with a purpose, right? When they told you to go left, you went left as fast as you could, or you were gonna do it again, and you were gonna be in the push-up position, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe that was your life, maybe at home with mom and dad, right? They told you something, or you're going to get a bubble, right? Don't, don't let me tell you again, right? Right? I, I think that we we have, you know, God's not there on the button, right? <laughs> um, but we have to behoove the commands that God has given us, and He is charging us for our own good. You know, sometimes we're like, ah, you know, I'll be I'll be more relaxed. About that. God is calling us to be bold, to be radical about our lives and. The decisions that we make, there's, there's all these consequences for our sin, good and bad. And, then, and we have to learn. That's, that's a part of our testimony. It's just learning and wisdom, right? Learning from the things that you've tried in there, the things you maybe hit your face. All right, Lord, well, I'm not going to do that again, right? We've all said that, right? All right, Lord, well, I'm not going to do that again. What you do the next week? Do it again. Maybe it's even the next day. All right, well, I'm I'm not going to do this. Please, Lord, give me the strength. What are you doing about it other than just saying, all right, Lord, give me the strength. All right. There's always so much willpower, right? But there's power in numbers, praise God. Amen. That's why I believe in the Bible studies and the different men's groups and women's groups and the things that you all have here. You know, invest. Invest in those people around you. It's imperative that we don't walk this journey alone. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, point number two is give God your mind. Right? The power of the mind. Right? We think it, we can do it, right? 
If someone tells you you can't, you know, it gives you that ultimate, you know, that pride, like, no, I'm going to do this, right? But when it comes to sin and the way the enemy works, he's going to call with your mind. What's he going to do? He said, no, you can't. You can't do that. You're sorry. You're a sinner. You'll always be a sinner. You ain't going to change. Anybody listen to that voice before? Yeah? How many of you ever just believed it? And then you were just in this, just stuck. Right? You're like, oh, Lord. You know, I'm just going to give up. Anybody just wanted to give up? No, I haven't. And once you start giving up, you start rationalizing, you start justifying your sin, you're more and more like, oh, I'm not as bad as so-and-so. Right? And then you start, you start comparing yourself, and you start judging, you become critical, and then everyone around is, you know, out to get you, right? You become insecure, and then you think, oh, when are you going to find out, right? And sooner or later, you think, man, when are you going to find out about my sin? Maybe I'm the only one. You know, I've been there before. Especially because even after becoming a Christian, becoming a pastor, not thinking, all right, the Lord's not going to use me. I've been sinned too much. There is no way God can use me. And God still does. Amen. God still loves you. He's still gracious towards you. And He can use any one of us for His glory. You don't have to be a chaplain or a pastor or a deacon to do that. All you got to do is share the word of God, believe and have faith that God can move you and you can move the mountains. What he say is faith as small as a mustard seed. Faith is this, this gentleman's brother, his mom praying for him, praying for her children. Brother up here, his son, using the gifts that God has given him for his glory and changing generations and able to do incredible things with the opportunities. These are all the things that God has allowed us to do and be a part of. Amen. You've got to give God your mind. And part of that is believing in yourself too. Um, the enemy wants to, uh, again, he wants to keep you down. He wants to shame you. He wants to blame you. He wants to keep you down in that pit. And you won't ever be able to rise and overcome. But I definitely believe you've got to have faith in yourself. Because God's giving you great gifts. He's giving you strength. He's giving you courage. He's giving you resilience. But sometimes we get caught up in believing those lies. There, uh, there's, a, there's a group called Casting Crown that sang a song, The Voice of Truth. It tells me a difference for me, right? The Voice of Truth says, Do not be afraid. This is for your glory, not for mine, but for you. So believe in God. You've got to believe in yourself. And what else you got to do? you got to help other people along the way. That is a great gift of leadership that I have seen in the mentors, the NCOs, and the officers who have invested in you. You have to pay for it. It's not all about you. Right? And you see those people who are all about themselves, about getting the rank, and getting the prestige, and getting the awards. At some point, they'll get found out. Those who are in it, to help others, those are the ones that are making incredible years because they're investing in people to their left and to their right. Amen. Point number three is that you would give God your will. Surrendering your will to His. Many are the plans of the Lord, or many are the plans of a man's heart, but it is the Lord's will that the man. How many of you 10 years ago thought you'd be here? How many of you thought maybe a year ago you'd be here? Some of y'all been here for a few years. <laughs> <laughs> but 10 years ago, I was in Iraq. I was a specialist in the Army. I was deployed with the infantry. And I never thought that God would call me into the ministry. He'd call me into the time that chaplain. And, you know, God has a sense of humor. He has a, he has a plan. That's right. And knowing that, you know what, when you open your mind, you open your heart, and when you surrender your will to His, He can do incredibly more than anything you could ever imagine, you could ever fathom, and you have to receive that blessing. Amen? Amen. 
Uh, I think sometimes we're afraid of the blessings of God. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I know I have been. Maybe you're just afraid to take that extra step of faith. Mm -hmm. Trusting that God has a plan. It's scary though, right? Mm -hmm. Not knowing what the future holds. What God has in store. So part of that is faith just knowing that God has a plan. Faith is being sure of what you hope for and not what you see. Today has enough worries of its own. You don't have to worry about it. You praise God today. You praise Him for what He's doing. And you know what? All of us have burdens. All of us have anxieties. All of us have fears. All of us have goals. And all of those things, what do we have to do? Bring them before the throne of God. I appreciate Brother John coming up here during the service and taking those praises and taking those prayers because prayer is powerful and effective. Yes. Amen. Amen. Ready to or fear God that Jesus is present. Amen. He's here tonight. Y'all believe that? Amen. Yeah. Amen. I definitely believe if we're giving God our bodies, we're surrendering those things that trip us up, those things that continue to ensnare us, whether it be in our heart or our mind. And if you center your will, you surrender your plans to God's will, I definitely believe God has that blessing. Mm -hmm. And uh, however, you've got to humble yourself. Mm -hmm. Psalm 37 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and what He will give you the desires of your heart. Mm -hmm. and sometimes we forget that delight part, right? Mm -hmm. Delight yourself in the Lord. And it's not vice versa. Sometimes, sometimes we're like everything. You want it our way, right? Mm -hmm. However, delight yourself in it. And each of us do that in different ways. I see many different nations and different countries represented here. Probably different styles of worship. Maybe different ways that God speaks to you. And I definitely believe that God would be proud of seeing this. Right. People, black, white, Asian, Filipino, all different countries in one room worshiping the Lord in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And you can't make that up. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. And so I, I pray that God will continue to love you, use you, and that you surrender yourself. And that wherever you are in your faith journey, that you remain open. God has a message. And in that still, quiet voice, when you listen, Truly listen. Are you listening? We have to make ourselves available to hear. We're distracted by you know, our iPhones, our everything that we have that distracts us, right? All the static noise. Sometimes you just got to put all that away, get by yourselves, and just say, speak to them. Speak. Your servant is listening. How would you be using how would you use me? Can I invite you tonight? Ask that question. God, how would you use me? What are things in my life that I need to give up? Are there some things in your life that you need to surrender? Maybe there's some shame or guilt. Maybe you need to forgive somebody. Maybe you need to talk to somebody at home and just let them know I love you. I've been thinking about you. I've been praying for you. I just wanted you to know that. And sow those seeds of good. Life is too short to walk around mad, angry. You gotta be like a brother over here, man. You gotta be happy. Praise the Lord. Have a beautiful smile he has on his face. And praise God for what he's doing. Amen. So as we close our service tonight, I invite you. Um, I'd like to for us to close by saying the Lord's Prayer to him. Would you pray with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Praise God. Got a few announcements, a couple slides for you. Uh, I don't want to insult your intelligence. I know we can all read, right? Uh, there's probably some college in the slide. But we have a Tuesday, we've got a Bible study in the morning, going through the covenants of God. Wednesday, 1800 intercessory prayer. And at 1830, uh, they have the Bible study going through the Gospel of Mark. Thursday, movie night. And then Friday, uh, choir practice. So if anyone out here, you've got a gift. I know that our brother came here tonight. Yeah. Came and sang. So hey, anyone can come out here and sing. So if you want to be a part of this, please talk to the brother and he'll pick you up. Come to choir practice. And then every Saturday here in this chapel, uh, going through the resolution for May 1900. Any other comments or any other announcements that maybe you missed? Okay. So I, I wasn't here for the prayer request, but I could make one. Um, a friend of mine back in uh, high school, she's a, she has cancer. She's been going through treatment for quite some time now. So if everyone will pray for her and maybe share her, she's losing hope. Uh, try to encourage her with words you know, and on Facebook and stuff uh, to the point where she told her husband she gave up. So she was encouraged because her husband told her she was going to quit, <laughs> literally. And, uh, it was, and he had heart problems. And so he went to her and he said she could fight. So she could pray for her. So she Anyone else? I invite you as a uh, brother to share this prayer request that you. Pray as I, I close my prayer. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this tonight. We thank you for uh, your praises and uh, for your many blessings. And you know, Father, uh, when we're anxious about anything, Lord, we, we come before you, Father, with our prayers, our petitions, and with thanksgiving, God. And the peace of God which transcend, transcends all understanding guard both our hearts and our minds, so we lift up Cheryl to you tonight. Amen. Father, you are the divine healer, the great physician, and so, Father, we just ask that you would anoint the hands of the doctors, uh, the nurses, all the caretakers, that you would just, uh, you give them infinite wisdom to be able to care for her, Lord, and know, God, it's not far from you to perform miracles, Father, and to say that uh, we just pray for healing over her, we pray for your love. We pray against any pain. And uh, Lord, we just ask that you would comfort her husband during this time, Father. He would be her biggest fan right now, just being by her side and loving her and encouraging her. We would take care of his family during the time. And even the friends would come around just to cook meals and to be there for this family, Lord. And again, we just lift up all the other praises and prayer requests to you, Father, and knowing God that. And you hear all of them and you answer them according to your plan and purpose. So, Father, again, thank you for tonight. Thank you for an opportunity to worship you, to hear from your scriptures, Lord. And may we leave um, tonight uh, just with joy, with peace, with love, kindness, and with an excitement, God, to go and share the good news, Father. Uh, may you protect us and keep us safe. And Lord, be with all of our loved ones back at home who are praying for us. We pray for the Afghanistan, the Afghani people, God, and we continue to just encourage them and love them and not judge them, but to be a light and to, to just um, serve them in a way, Father, that we would be the hands and feet of Christ, Lord. Um, and I pray for this country, Lord, that's been torn by war and violence and hatred and terrorism, Father, Lord. You are the great peacemaker, and Lord. We speak your peace over this country, and we speak your peace over this world. So we ask, Father, for wisdom and discernment for our politicians, for those in Washington, that, God, they would make decisions with integrity, Father, and that, Lord, they would have our best intentions in mind, Lord. Again, thank you for this night. And it's in your holy name I do pray. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Go. Have a blessed week. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. 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 Thank you.